Um, we had uh, two uh, Tuesday and Thursday, two um, good practices with a lot of situations. Uh, we ended the day with a lengthy two-minute uh, drill with the ones and twos. We kind of uh, beat up just a little bit at wide receiver and a little bit on the D-line. Not n Nothing uh, that really you need to ask me about as far as uh, length of in injuries or anything like that, but just uh, nagging here or there um, where we didn't get a chance to work our threes uh, in that last two-minute drive. Other than that, we had a full practice. I've been pleased with the effort. I like the feel of the team. And uh, we brought uh, – Ronnie Fouch and Kobe Smith here, uh, so you guys get a chance to meet them. They're two fantastic men, really great coaches, um, and great family men, and and uh, really uh, honored that they chose the University of Arkansas to come help us win. Yeah, it looked like a pretty good day for the defense today. What were your kind of thoughts yeah. about the day? Yeah, you know, um, we're, we put a new uh, defensive front in which obviously affects the back end as well. Um, offense is still uh, adding some plays too. We won't add anything coming to uh, Saturday's practice. We'll just we won't have any new install. But uh, to answer your question, I thought it was probably the opposite on Tuesday uh, that it was today. So I felt like um, the defense uh, played extremely fast today and. Uh, uh, has some fine some some tweaks uh, uh, that they did with some of their line movements, some of their twist movements that I thought affected the offense a little bit today. Um, but as far as the week goes, I think it's probably you know, I don't know win and lose, but I felt Tuesday the offense had a little bit better day, and today I thought the defense did, and and uh, they're playing really hard. So um, you know the one thing we're not doing. Uh, we're not turning – we're not having wide open guys. You know, it seems like you guys are at practice, so you see that, you know, each ball has uh, been very uh, well contested. Uh, you know, obviously, if the lower you get down the depth chart, there might be a, a wide open guy here or there. But uh, I think the the foundation, the consistency of our defense is, is a way ahead of where it was a year ago. Yeah, and when you look for the Saturday scrimmage, do you have in mind, you know, how many plays, how long it will look like? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think we're going to go about each each guy, each guy who's playing with the ones and twos will get about 50 snaps. Um, there'll be some situations third down. We're going to do two minute, get the ball back two minute. Um the threes will probably get around that 30 mark. I, I think it'll be about 130, 140 play scrimmage. Um, and it will conclude with the uh, get the ball back to a minute drill. What are some things that you maybe are most excited for assessing on Saturday with the scrimmage? Uh, anything particular you're, you know, really looking forward to seeing? I just want to see how much we, uh, improve i felt like we tackle we've we've actually tackled to the ground two times already i feel like our tackling has been decent I, i'd like to see us improve in that i'd like to see us break some tackles um i'd like to see us uh throw and catch um consistently um and um uh, and I, I i like what we're doing secondary wise um but the intermediate pass game, I would like for us to be a little bit uh, better on the crossing underneath routes. And uh, But I just want it to function well. I want good snaps. We had a few today that weren't good. Uh, and they weren't terrible. We're not snapping on the ground, over the head, all that kind of stuff. But I want that consistent inside the frame snap. And we're rolling on offense and defense. And, and uh just to improve off the last two times that we've we've done we've done I can't really say that we've done anything terrible where I'm going oh man oh man oh man I would just like to be a little bit more consistent and a little bit better this scrimmage than we were last scrimmage. Jaquindon uh, spoke with us on Tuesday and he seemed you know really kind of motivated just you know, playing through an injury last year, maybe coming with a chip on his shoulder. I mean, how valuable is it with the, a newcomer, a transfer to kind of have that, you know, internal motivation? And what have you seen from him so yeah, far? I think the value of transfers is what kind of people they are, what kind of, care, you know, who are they? Um, 
obviously we hope that we've done the right homework on him on the field from tape, which we have. Um, but it's what you bring value like like a Taylor Green or a Junior Carmona or a Keyshawn Blackstock or Nichols or or Sorry. Those guys are good kids that wanted a family football team. They wanted that feel. And uh, uh, J.J.'s the same way. Um, I can tell you a story. I think we probably blocked first and goal from the 10 uh, last scrimmage for two. He got four. Um, so now we're set second to six. We probably blocked the next play for two. He got four. And then the next time it was third and two, and we probably blocked it for one, and he got in the end zone. And that's I think that's his size and his pad level, and he's played before. I think that is something that we we're needing, what we're looking for, and I think he gives it to us. And I believe he's making Rashad DeBinion a better player because Rashad's really had a good spring, you know. And and obviously I'm I'm high on Braylon and Isaiah and those guys and Damo. Uh, they're all playing better. Coach, you said before the spring you wanted to name a starting quarterback. Hopefully after the spring, yeah. how close do you feel like you are? It seems like we seen Taylor take all the one reps. Well, I think it's just fair. To be honest with you, is um, we had we had told them that we we would figure it out by the end of the spring, and you know, I mean, you guys have been at practice, I think, you know, but uh, we got to wait till the end of the spring, and then that's what we'll do. We'll continue to practice, probably about like what we're doing right now in the rotation. Live tackle plays, you think you'll have with first, second, third group on Saturday. The same amount. It'll be all live, so it'll be 50-50, 30, probably, Trey. Do you, you, like, you feel like you have a 1,000-yard back on this team? Uh, I think I think we have a, a stable of backs. I feel, let me say this. I feel a lot better about our running back situation today than I have in a while. Um, but – I, here's what I think. I think we have uh, several of them that can average four and a half, five yards of carry, and uh, that would be more interesting to me than if we have one. I know what you're asking. Do we have that one horse yet? Um, I think that's still – we're still kind of trying to evaluate that. Maybe that would be a good question on – whenever we talk Tuesday because uh, it would be a good question. Maybe I'll have a little bit better idea there. Seems like Brad Spence is in the right place at the right time and yeah. coverage a lot. Is that what you're seeing from him? Yeah, I mean, he's. I asked him today, right when I walked in, I said, "You gonna get you another one today?" I mean, he he's an interception magnet, you know, and uh, uh, that's a group we really don't talk about a lot, you know. Um, but that young linebacker group's pretty pretty solid now. Dean and Spence and Sanford and. And uh, obviously, Sori coming in has helped us. Um, but he seems to understand, you know, uh, the route tree of the uh, what's coming at him, where he's supposed to be. He really has good eyes on the quarterback, understands where the offensive player is. And he a lot of times he'll get between them and the ball. And, he, you know, he'd be a great tight end, I think. I, I'm not going to tell him that, but he can catch now. And then I think Quincy Rhodes had a sack in the two minute drill. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's played a ton with the first team defense. What do you think of that? He he ha he hasn't played a whole lot. He has played some. Um uh, Landon Jackson also did a really nice job in that two minute. Um, uh, but it takes three of them with the picks that we're running and things of like that. But he 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 really did a nice job there too. But Quincy's a guy that just he just needs he's needs more reps and I think getting through this spring, he'll he gets better, a little bit better each day because of his confidence grows because he understands what he's supposed to be doing. He's playing a little faster. I think everybody in here that's ever played, if you're thinking about responsibility, you're not you're probably a half a stride behind what you would be athletic ability wise. And you can kind of see it each day, just getting a little bit faster, a little bit faster, because he's ultra talented. I mean, with his skills and his body size. I know he got dinged up today, but Armstrong, I guess you feel good about his injury. Then also, like, what kind of spring has he had? Like, what is where have you seen him improve? Outstanding. Uh, he's another guy I think that 
has b developed into a leader, Tyrone Broden, you know. Uh, but arms, to me, Andrew is is uh, playing at a high, high rate. Um, and I know he was a good player last year. I believe he's a lot better right now. He just had a tweak in the ham and, and I wasn't able to finish out. I, I think he'll be fine on Saturday, but – I'm really proud of him. I'm really proud of him and Broden too, and Tesla and all those guys. But Andrews, to me, has really been has really changed. Him and Broden have changed. They're older. Uh, they're taking leadership ability or their their responsibility, excuse me, and uh, they're catching the ball extremely well. I wanted to ask about the the two assistants you brought in here today. Both of them have a pretty extensive history with Coach Petrino. Just how much does that help with them? Well, I think. I think uh, the first thing is is that I think it's just like anybody that we hire either side of the ball, you would like to bring, if you can, if there's availability on your staff, you'd like to bring somebody in that's had some type of history with the coordinator. And that was with, well, when we hired uh, Dan and we, we, we didn't have availability, but we, we hired a analyst, you know, and – Obviously, KB and he brought in Cooper and and on defense, you know, Woodson came with Williams. It's the same thing with Bobby. Um, he had recommended Ronnie, and then once once Ronnie came in and was the coach and man that he is, uh, then coach coach and several other coaches. You know, I had six guys recommended for uh, Coach Smith's job. And Bobby had recommended him as well. And to be honest with you, for what we need, uh, uh, both of them were uh, the best fits for us. And it happened to also be that Bobby's worked with both of them. And and it's very important when you hire people that if you if you can hire people that somebody's worked with, you, that don't mean you always hit, you know. But we did this time. Seemed like Isaiah Satania had a really good week in practice. I know we've talked about him a little bit before, but just as far as these last two practices we've seen, just what have you liked from him? Speed. His his he's he's a different route runner. You know, um, he's running his routes and getting out of his break and getting separation uh, better than he has before. Uh, I think if you go back and look at his high school tape, uh, it was a lot of reverses and a lot of goes. And uh, and they did a wonderful job over there at Fayetteville High with him. But now he, he's running so many different types of routes. I think Ronnie's done a really good job of getting him in and out of his breaks. With that comes confidence, and that, to me, is why he's catching the ball uh, better than he has. And then was Posca there today? I didn't see him for some of the later. Andreas? I don't think he was out there. He he uh, he had a uh, thumb injury, and so um, he was out there in Indy, but he wasn't out there in uh, in team. But he's had a, he he jammed his thumb, and that's been a problem in his past a little bit. I don't think there's any type of surgical situation with that. But he was taped up pretty good in our walk yesterday, and and. Uh, uh, Basically, what we do, we put them through Indy, and then if they if they can't make it through Indy or they can't get to Indy, obviously, but if they can't make it through Indy, then they're shut down and, and they go rehab for the rest of the day. And then staying with the tight ends, just it seems like Gums has been used in the passing game a lot. Just how much do you like him as a weapon there? Well, I think he's the guy that we were hoping that we, we were getting a year ago. And again, uh, he's also gums also you know we're doing a little bit of crossover training uh you know one-on-ones with linebackers and tight ends one-on-ones with running backs and linebackers um right now he's he's uh one of our better protectors uh when we use our tight end in protection but what we saw off of tape at north texas is we're seeing now here which he was hurt some last year with the ankle and things of that uh, and like that. But right now um, he's playing at a high rate of speed, and I think he's playing with a lot of confidence. But he worked extremely hard since the last of the season. 
seeing Tyrone Broden get downfield a lot more. You touched on him a little bit, but only averaged seven point three yards a catch for a guy mm-hmm. that can run twenty two miles an hour, yeah. six seven. What have you seen from him? His he also looks like he's put on a little bit of weight. He has. I, that's the thing. He's not the slim. You know, uh, he he's gained some strength, uh, a lot of confidence. Again, Trey. Part of his problem last year is a lot of reps that he missed because he was injured in uh, when he when he came in or went early when he was here. But uh, him and Armstrong are the two guys. Now Tesla's always had that confidence about him, but him and Andrew uh, are the two guys that are like call the play. I'll get open. Throw me the football. I'll catch it. I don't care who's on me. And that's that's where he's gone to right now. And I, I, uh, he, he's a weapon. He's a threat. He's like, you just said, he's tall, he's fast. And again, I believe his route running has improved as well. When you guys do that Oki front on defense and you have Nico and Spence basically doing the same position and they're what 40 pounds difference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what, what is the thought process with those guys? A lot of times that, that will be dictated by personnel, offensive personnel. Uh, but, um, Right now, we're just trying to uh, find out. I I want the odd front. I want it without taking uh, what we would call a big off the field. And so, uh, one of re- one of the reasons would be offensive personnel with Spence. The other one would be because his ability to rush the passer uh, would be uh, another uh, situation out there. But. Uh, We need to have, in my opinion, we need to have a big, in other words, a defensive end that can stand up and do that. And we need to have a linebacker in there that can do that as well. Spence, for what we have size-wise, is Dean could probably be a guy that we may look at doing that same thing, Trey, uh, maybe starting next week. But it's just two different type of people that you might use against personnel changes on offense. Is that – is that just something you'd mix in, because uh, kind of randomly, or is it like a certain scenario that? No, you would... well, I think I think it first started because you know it, the SEC is a mint world. I mean, a, an odd four eye world uh, that uh, is used a lot on first and second down, um, but our interior we don't have a. Uh, enough. We've got four really good players in there, I think, on the D-line, D the end the bigs inside. And we probably could move Landon in there in a situation, which we have done in practice. Uh, we could probably move Quincy Road in, Rhodes in there if we needed to. But that also gives with Spence, Dean, and those guys give you an opportunity to have three D-linemen on the field and still another 240, 45-pound guy out there. So uh, we're going to – yes, we're going to use both of those those as long as we like it. Um, uh, we we need to have that capability of still playing six guys instead of eight with uh, a big linebacker if, if, if that's the case. Coach, other than the usual like Clarks, Braxton, Snacks, who in the secondary is kind of catching – making a move or Slaughter, catching your attention? Nico Slaughter. I mean – He's as good as any of them back there. He's a good player, uh, and he's he's a really good kid. Uh, he's done good. I like I like that I like the two young corners, Jaden, you know, and and uh, two uh, that uh, Bridges. Uh, uh, I like those two guys a lot. Uh, Akari Johnson has played well. Tevis Metcalf, uh, he got something to him now. He'll knock the heck out of you. But uh, I like those guys, and and uh, but right off the top, Slaughter's the guy that is really going to help us. That's exactly what I, I want to ask you about your cornerback rotation. What you're seeing, because Corner. yeah, corners. Well, you know, Jaheim Singletary is playing better than he has. Stewart, you know, those two guys are kind of battling out. Braxton, Cuddy, uh, that would probably be your top four right now. Um, Braxton, um, Braxton's playing well. Um, Monday, Tuesday probably wasn't as good a practice as he's had before, but he's going to be a really, really good player, and he is. Uh, and then you probably the next those next three guys you're probably looking at who's 
two, which Stu's had a lot of those reps. Um, but I think Jaheim and Cuddy are two guys that uh, could start for us. Um, they're they're good players. The only, you know, though I think we're going to be fine at the corner position. That way, um, we still probably need to find another safety, which we may have him on the team. We just got to keep working them. Thanks, Coach. All right, guys. Did you were they were they talking today? Yes. Yeah.